This is Dr. Saad in front of you and today my topic is the stress related mucosal diseases and the non stress related mucosal diseases. So first of all moving on to the stress related mucosal diseases as its name indicate stress. Stress means that it means the it may be severe trauma. It may be burns means stress due to trauma due to burns due to intracranial disease or it may due to the physiologic stress clear so this is the stress i have told you that now what is stress so according to this stress we have different types of the diseases number first uh, the stress that is we are going to study is the ulcers so uh, here are ulcers so on the basis of these we have divided the ulcers into three types ulcers now there are three types of the ulcers number first they are called as the stress ulcers stress ulcers are those ulcers which are caused by or caused due to you can say sepsis due to shock or trauma means damage to the gastric mucosa due to the sepsis shock or the trauma now what is its pathogenesis we will be discussing just a few minutes later but first of all i am telling telling you the types of the ulcers then we have the second one that is the curling ulcers curling ulcers are basically found in the proximal duodenum they are found in the proximal duodenum and why they occur they occur due to the burns their main cause is the burns basically what happens in the burns when there is a severe burn there will be hypovolemia and hypovolemia and necrosis occur which results in the damage to the mucosa this is the curling ulcers then we have the third and the last type of the ulcer that is called as the cushing ulcers cushing ulcers are basically found in the you can say in the stomach in esophagus as well as in the duodenum it was found in the proximal duodenum it is found in all these three and the major cause of this cushing ulcer is due to the intracranial disease remember these three types of the ulcers clear now moving on to the pathogenesis of the stress related mucosal disease or what is the pathogenesis of the stress so first of all what is the pathogenesis of this disease number first is that in the stress what happens that there will be hypotension and this hypotension which will be leading to the less blood supply to the uh, you can say the organ or you can say to the blood that will be resulting to the damage to the uh, means mucosa then we have the second cause that is vasoconstriction now what happens that in the stress related conditions you all know that in our stress related conditions what happens that our sympathetic system is activated clear then what it caused basically the sympathetic system caused the vasoconstriction of the splenic vessels means those vessels that are supplying to the git so their vasoconstriction occur and this vasoconstriction it may lead to the decreased blood supply obviously blood supply will be decreased clear due to decreased blood supply obviously the nutrients the oxygen and everything that is not supplied to the organ or you can say to the mucosa which results in obviously the mucosal damage so this is basically the pathogenesis of the stress related mucosal disease now basically in these diseases what uh, is the treatment for this disease what is the treatment how you treat them basically there is a symptomatic treatment number 1 is a symptomatic treatment that is the proton pump inhibitors ppis that are called ppis the proton pump inhibitors basically they decrease the gastric acid secretions that uh, helps in reducing the ulcers clear reducing the ulceration basically what happens that stress occurs stress leads to the inflammation and ultimately leads to the ulcer so the ppis they decrease the gastric acid secretion gastric acid secretion and then they decrease the ulcers but the main thing is that we have to treat the underlying cause main is the 
treatment of underlying cause this was a symptomatic treatment but now you have to treat main treatment is the underlying cause treatment means what is the cause is it sh uh, shock it is due to the intracranial disease is it due to the burns or whatever it is you have to manage that condition okay so this is the treatment of this disease now we are moving on towards the non-stress related diseases clear to the non-stress related diseases there are two types of the uh, two diseases when we will be studying so one by one and basically those diseases they uh, non-stress related they leads to the bleeding in the stomach to the gastric bleeding so here is stress related now i'm writing here non-stress related mucosal diseases number first disease in this that is the d i dio Loy. I think so this is the correct spelling or there may be a spelling mistake but something it was like this diphloi lesions and pronunciation you can also means whatever suits to you can carry out you can call it whatever the pronunciation is so the diphloi lesion lesions what are these lesions basically in this there is a large mucosal artery clear in this there will be large mucosal artery now why this large mucosal artery what is the cause of this basically it is due to the abnormal branching of mucosal submucosal artery which may lead to the large mucosal artery clear this is the diaphyloid lesion and this large mucosal artery it can also rupture and it can lead to the bleeding clear this diaphyloid lesion basically it occur um, mostly it occurs at the lesser curvature of the stomach lesser curvature of the stomach and mainly near to the gastroesophageal junction clear at the lesser curvature and near the gastroesophageal junction so this is the diaphyloid lesion and basically it uh, by the use of the NSAIDs this may also occur by the use of the NSAID or you can say NSAIDs may cause the bleeding and the patient may present with the you can say hematemesis may occur melena can also occur a blood in the stool or blood in the vomiting so patient presents with this disease clear so this is the diaphyloid lesion now the second disease that we are will be studying is the GAVE G A V E now what is the full form of this G for the gastric a for the antral v for the vascular and uh, sorry yes disease gave disease is the ectasia e for ectasia gave disease gastric antral vascular ectasia or you can say disease simply it is disease so this gave disease what happens in this if you are seeing endoscopically if you are seeing endoscopically what happens that there will be a watermelon appearance of the stomach that's why we call it watermelon stomach now what does this means watermelon stomach basically you all have seen that uh, watermelon you all have seen clear this is for suppose your watermelon in watermelon there are some dark patches like these dark lines in the watermelon and some are the light means some areas are light some areas are dark clear this is suppose like a watermelon so what happens same occur in the stomach basically these these dark lines they are basically erythematous areas clear these are the erythematous areas and this one without the red color that are the pale areas so there is a you can say a pale area then erythematous area then pale area then erythematous area so that's why this looks like the stomach looks like the watermelon means if you are seeing endoscopically you will be seeing these lesions they are you will be seeing these lesions just it will be looking like your watermelon clear so endoscopically the gave disease it's having the watermelon stomach you can say then histologically you will see that there will be obviously dilated capillaries may present and the thrombi may also present 
clear and the last thing that the patient uh, how the patient presents obviously the patient will be presenting uh, if their bleeding occurs so pa patient present with the hematoma uh, hematemesis melena and iron deficiency anemia due to the hemorrhage or loss of the iron so these are the uh, you can say the patient's presence with the uh, with these symptoms then uh, in the last thing that uh, i would like to tell you that there are certain morphological features of the acute ulcers so uh, what are the morphological features acute ulcers are basically round and they are less than 1 cm in diameter clear just i am telling you here acute ulcers morphologic features they are round clear they are less than 1 cm in diameter clear and they may show the transmural inflammation clear so and remember one thing that there will be no vascular thickening in the uh, acute ulcers and there will be no scarring this is scarring and the vascular thickening it occurs in the chronic ulcers not in the acute ulcers clear so these are the morphologic features of the acute ulcers so in this lecture we studied about the is stress related disease which in which we studied about the ulcers different types of the ulcer three types of the ulcer we have told you that was the stress the curling ulcers and the cushing ulcers then i told you the uh, morphologic features of the acute ulcer right now so these are the morphologic features then we move on towards our non stress related mucosal disease where we studied two types of the disease the diaphyla lesion and the gave disease clear so uh, up till now uh, we have completed our topic and if you have any query any confusion you can ask in the comment section and thank you so much allah hafiz